When you share your model with somebody else for rendering, you should really consider sending along the custom images of your materials, the non-Autodesk images. So I just want to demonstrate that for you over here. Here's a roof and I want to make this into a thin tin roof. So with the material that is applied to it, I'll demonstrate how to do this quickly. So we go edit type duplicate. I'm going to call this tin roof. And then I go into the structure and I change the thickness and I'm interested in this material. I look for a material that is kind of what I'm looking for. And then I can duplicate this. I'm going to call this tin roof. This tin roof needs to be placed into a materials library. So typically within a project, it's, it's, it's good practice to create a materials library. And over here, we can create our own materials library, create a new library. And within my project folder here, I've got the materials. And I'm going to create a new materials library. my new material matlib save and then I want to add this tin roof to it I right click and I add to Remember not to press escape when you're in the materials library. Right click and add to my new materials library. Right, so there's my new materials library. I can create a new category for this. So roofing. And there I can drag it across into my roofing category. Great, so this material has been created within the uh, project. It has some assets. There's the tin roof and its assets we can see on the right hand side. What is its name? This is compulsory, compulsory. The appearance that you can change out. Maybe you've got some concrete that you can see through so you don't want to make it look like concrete but it's something else. And then the physical and thermal properties which may be deleted if necessary if you don't know what they are. You may also switch them out. Just be careful with these assets. These assets have your properties that are typically unique to, to certain categories and they've got different properties. Water, for instance, would have wave heights that you can change. Clearly, that's not going to be applicable over here. So, where do you get images from? Well, you can take them with a camera, or in my case, I like this website called Kets, uh, Stex, uh, SketchUp Texture Club. There's some other ones that you can try as well, but this is a really good resource for images and going back to my project now I can click on the name of the image and what I've done within my materials folder in my project I've created a texture folder so over here you can see all of my custom textures that I've inserted into the drawing I select that item and I say OK open right so that's now loaded the image and then the image itself I can transform using this dialog over here I can change the scale and the height, unlock the aspect ratio and rotate and so onwards. So clearly I need to create this as a new material, uh, a new asset and so I can duplicate this asset and call this turn roofing And just like I created the uh, materials library, so I can also create my own custom asset library. So the tin roofing I will now find if I go onto the asset browser and I go with tin roofing search for it. Remember, it's the one I've just created. There we can find tin roofing. That's fantastic. But I may also create my own new asset library. Again, I'm just going to create it within this folder over here. I'm going to call it my new asset library and save and then I can add this 
new category just like with materials library and I can call this roofing search for the asset and then I can right click on that asset and add it to my new asset library under the roofing subcategory that's great that asset has now been saved and just for good measure I go and add the tin roofing material back onto my new materials library and replace the one that is there at the moment great so ok and ok and ok it updates my roof with the new image there is my tin roof so even if you had to do the e-transmit on a Revit file, it won't include that custom image. And so what you should do is when you send your file to somebody else, include for them this texture folder so that they can see or have access to the images that are used to generate the assets. And for good measure, send them the material and asset library along as well. When they receive the file, what they would need to do is to go onto the options go to rendering and add a rendering appearance path and then you would browse towards your texture library so if they were to render this now they would also have access to those images and you can compare apples with apples and pears with pears so pretty simple but very important and something that most people don't do uh, one is typically under the impression when one starts using Revit that these images will automatically be included with the Revit file. They are not. And they are not included with e-transmittals either. So do send them these image libraries and um, you should have no problem rendering from here onwards. Happy rendering!